What's up, guys? My name is Kurt Jansen from Third Island Productions. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. We are back with another episode of Tutorial Tuesdays. For today's lesson, I am not really giving a lesson. I am just going to be going over reason and most of what it can do and each section of it. So, for those beginners looking for a new DAW, I highly recommend this because it is not very complicated. It does look a little complicated, but it is very simple and it is set up exactly like an SSL mixer, which is really cool. An SSL mixer is used in a lot of really expensive studios. But anyways, let's get started. So this right here is obviously your mixer. This is where you adjust your gain, your EQ, your dynamics, your inserts, your sends. You got your faders down here, your panning knobs, mute solo. But I'm going to start at the top. Each of these are different channels. They all do the exact same thing. So all the knobs might seem a little intimidating, but each this is this is a separate channel right here. And it all each channel does the same thing. So right up here, you have your gain, set your gain structure, your signal path, you have your dynamics right here, you have your compressor, peak, ratio, threshold of your compressor, the release, attack, and below here you have a gate and expander, the range, threshold, release, and hold of the gate. And then right here you have your EQ, your low pass, you got your low pass filter, your high pass filter, frequency knobs, then you have your high frequency spectrum, dB knob, your high mids, your low mids, and your lows right here and you can set the Q right here you have your insert effects and then you have your send effects right here and you can have up to eight send effects I know that sounds crazy it's not that many but sometimes um, I don't use over eight because I'm going to explain what you can do in the next section of reason. So let me finish going over this. But anyways, here is the fader and we got the pan left and right knob, mute and solo right here. Do your output bus. And these buttons take you to your sequencer, which is this and your rack which is this but go over to the right you got the best thing in reason the master bus compressor it's modeled exactly like an SSL threshold your ratio 2 to 1, 4 to 1, 10 to 1 side chain key attack release and your makeup gain this thing is really awesome. Definitely the one of the best things about Reason. And here's your uh, effects sends levels. Your master insert levels. Your effects return levels. And your master fader. And this is just the overall EQ spectrum right here. So that is the mixer. Now I'm going to go to the rack. See how I did that? I just drag up. And you got the rack. So this is what houses all of your plugins. So right here, the master section, these are the sends I have going, just these two. These are your instruments. So this is just a regular concert piano I have. Um, this is the floor tom. I'm sorry. 
Yes, this is the floor tom of the redrum right here. This is a redrum. It is a drum sequencing uh, instrument. But yeah, so this is what houses all of your plugins and your instruments. And this is where you go to edit the sounds that they create. And also, actually, getting back to um, the sends, you don't need to necessarily use. You can use all these sends if you want to, but in each instrument, you can just put in a reverb or a compressor or any, honestly, any dynamic plugin or any effects plugin. Um, the only thing is, is if you load um, effects and dynamic plugins on each instrument track, then it'll it'll blow up your um, CPU usage and cause a lot of crackling and popping. And that's what using the, uh, the FX sends right here are good for. But if you kind of run out and you want to do more, I guess it does not hurt because obviously I have them loaded into almost every track on here. So, and I get away with it just fine. I may not be doing it the correct way, but I mean, it works for me and I think this might be a bold statement, but I think my mixes sound okay. Uh, but anyways, yes, that's the rack. So we're going to go to the sequencer. This is where you edit all of your MIDI and your audio files. So I'm going to start at the top here. You got your mouse, obviously. You got your drawing tool. This is You draw this out, and then you can go in and automate with this and then on a MIDI track for example you can grab you can do the draw tool do that and you can go in and add a bunch of MIDI notes like that pretty simple stuff it's like logic kind of but anyways deleting that because that's not even part of the song yeah, I got a big song loaded up here just just for you guys. But anyways, you got your eraser tool right here. That's obvious to what it does. This is your cut tool. This uh cuts your audio file on the sequ audio files on the sequencer. Undo that. Um then you got your mute tool. You can go and mute different sections. It's really cool. This works good for reggae music, so you don't have to do automatic automated dubbing even though that's the correct way to do it sometimes if you want to get away with want to get away with it i just mute the individual tracks uh this i actually know oh okay that's what that does i never use it because i use uh quick keys um actually how do i get oh no i use these okay anyways in your grabber tool you can just Vertical, diagonal, horizontal. And then right here, you have your different modes. So for MIDI, I'm going to go back to this. I'm in edit mode for MIDI right now. But when you click audio, it gives you a bunch of different modes. It gives you pitch edit, which is awesome. It's kind of like Melodyne. Um, then you got slice edit. This is where you can adjust and quantize the um actually where your audio files are placed i guess each uh transient or hit and then you got your comp edit this is where you uh do a different do a bunch of different takes on vocals for an example and you can pick which audio sounds the best and you just click this yeah i want this audio or i want that one and you can cut it however you want it. It's really awesome. Um, this right here is your snap. So say you say you want to move this freely like that. You just unsnap it. But if you want to snap it, it snaps to bar. So every single measure, it's going to move it. It's going to move it up a measure. And then you can do... Um, half note moves it up a half note moves it up a quarter 
eighth, and so on. Um, let's see. Okay, so I never use these up here either. So, I mean, if you want to, so, uh, this right here is your solo and mute. Those engage when you solo or mute the tracks here. So you can mute the track here, or you can mute it in the mixer, or you can mute it in the rack too. You have like three different places you can mute it. And sometimes if you mute it all in, in every place, then it's going to be muted and you can't figure out where it is muted, <laughs> but you just got to go back and figure it out anyways. Um, but yeah, these are the different, these are all your different instruments and these right here are automation lanes. Uh, this is your record enable. So say you want to record a bunch of different things at once. And then, obviously, you zoom in. I guess zoom in horizontally or vertically. No, this is vertical zoom. And then this right here shows how big you want your wavelengths to be. I keep mine in the middle all the time. This right here zooms. This is your zoom in and out. This thing. This bar. Zoom in and out. Like that. And then below here, you have your on-screen keyboard. This groove, I don't ever use. It has to do with uh, creating shuffle moves and um, maybe doing some swing variations, but I don't ever use it. Um, this is your quantize record. So if you are recording some vocals or a, I don't know, a MIDI, MIDI track, you just hit record and then you quantize it to what um, what beat you want it to or subdivision you want to record on or you want it to quantize on. I'm sorry. Um, so say you're playing a bunch of 16th notes on your MIDI on your keyboard. It'll quantize the 16th notes. Say you just want to quantize um, if you're playing. Well, it'll quantize up to 16th notes. So, or an up to eighth, up to quarters, and so on. Sorry if I sound a little confusing. Um, this is my third tutorial ever. And my third tutorial of ever talking to people on the mic. So, bear with me. This is for beginners. I hope this helps. Anyways, again, right here is your time position play it if it'll let me play it hold on sorry technical difficulties okay okay so this counts the bars this counts the beats. This counts the subdivisions. This obviously counts the amount of seconds and milliseconds. This right here is your click. You want your click to work. Turn that on. You want to do a pre-click before you record. You press pre. This is your metronome level. This is your tempo. And this is your time signature right here. Forward, backward, obvious stuff. Stop. Double click stop if you want to go to the very beginning. Just press stop once if you just, or space bar if you just wanted to stop, obviously. Um, play, record. This is an overdub. I don't ever use the alt. I honestly don't know what that does. But yeah, this is if you want to overdub. This is just a quick way to um, create a new track under the track that you just recorded on if you want to overdub vocals or something. This is your loop, um, your looper. Right here, if you want to set a loop, you just do left to right. You can do it as close as you want or as far as you want. And then you just press loop right there and it'll turn on. And this right here, actually, this shows you what location your looper is at. This is your DSP meter. This shows how much um, a CPU, I guess, you're using. And if you're doing too much, it'll spike and... 
It won't be good. You'll hear a lot of crackling, like I said earlier. Um, this is your in, and this is your out, obviously. Here I am talking. You can see it going in, but not coming out because I have the audio routed into um, Adobe Audition so I can export it correctly. But yes, that is pretty much reason in a nutshell. This is all its um, attributes and everything it can do or everything you can do. Um, I'll probably be doing another tutorial on um, how to gain stage next or um, actually I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'll have to figure that out for you guys. But anyways, I hope this video was helpful and not too long and I hope it was bearable for uh, some of you guys because like I said, this is my first tutorial, well, not first, this is my third tutorial. So I hope it was bearable for you guys. Hope it was a good one. You guys have an amazing afternoon. See y'all later.